All right, hi everyone. This is uh, John Jay. It's a April 22nd. And I just want to cover the new FinCEN reporting requirements that look like they're, they're trying to intimidate people and, and get people to report upon the formation of a company, any company, even a trust, business trust. And by the way, this doesn't, this does not exclude trust organizations generally. Okay, I can tell you right now how this works. So those of you who, who want to try and disparage the formation of a company to so that you can sell a trust, this rule and these, these procedures and policies that I'm going to talk about right now, you're not excluded. So we're just going to have to deal with this, guys. Um, so I'll give you my opinion on it. And I've just spent maybe a half hour researching this, and I'm pretty fast at researching things. But this is going to give you, you can read it for yourself. I'm going to give you the exact point instead of going on uh, the internet and looking for people's editorials on this subject, I'm going to give you what the actual government's saying. Okay, so Financial Crimes Network is um, an, an agency that deals with, you know, financial crimes, of course, but it's enforced through the IRS. And it, uh, um, much of what it's doing right now, really, and it was formed about 20 something years ago. And what it's been doing is policing uh, U.S. citizens in their uh, corporate ownership or interest in banking activities in foreign countries. And that's why I was saying for years that, um, you know, your U.S. citizens are never offshore because any interest you have or even signer rights, okay, you're, you're at not outside the purview of the Financial Crimes Network. And so most of what Financial Crimes Network does is impose huge, ugly, horrible penalties on people, even those that participate with reporting and try to comply with reporting they impose these huge fines and penalties and it has nothing to do with national security, which is what the Bank Secrecy Act is for and all these matters. Okay, so um, they've just basically used it to punish people that go, U.S. citizens that go offshore. That's what's been going on for about the last 20 years. All right, and I've got a couple of cases on that and um, uh, they're just a bunch of liars. Okay, so this is how it plays out. So here's what they've done. In 2022, it looks like uh, the United States, um, they, the Congress enacted this law called the um, cur uh, the uh, Corporate Transparency Act of 2022. Oh, the regulation that we've been dealing with, well, since you've you since you've known me, guys, come on, let me. I hate to have to stop and go back and meet everybody. I'm sorry, guys. I, yeah. I have I have to mute everybody. Please don't please don't unmute it and make all this background noise. All right, I, I don't want to make this last all day. So, Financial Crimes Network. It's been around. You guys have had to deal with it. Okay, this is why I write up my documents the way I do for the LLC, so that we can get past all this stuff. So the banks have been doing this for years. They've been asking if you know your customer or what they call the um, customer due diligence information. Right. Specifically, we're dealing with the the beneficial owner information, all right? So the along comes the Corporate um, Transparency Act of 2022. This is after the Bank Secrecy Act and the Anti-Money Laundering Act and the National Defense Authorization Act, all of which are about policing uh, any things that may have to do with risk to national security. And of course, that is not what they're doing. They're just harassing us. But here, here we go. This is what they're doing. The first time I've ever seen this. So, so I'm showing you right here, the Federal Register rulemaking. Now there's been public debate. This was open for public debate back when they uh, were distracting us with all kinds of nonsense in the news. They've been doing this quietly in the background and I'm sure they're doing some other things too, but basically here's the, here's the crux of it, okay? So you got the Corporate Transparency Act under section 6403. This is implemented and I'm gonna show you what, what it is. It's implemented under the same regulations that the BSA was, the Bank Secrecy Act, and all these others. I'm gonna show you that in just a second. So they just, they added a law that's relying on the same regulations that are already in place, all right? In other words, we've already been doing these things with the bank. Now here's what they wanna do. They wanna have, and I guess it's gonna be an online data collection form. I would imagine it's gonna be approved by the Office of Management and Budget with its own OMB number, but it's gonna be online, I believe. I don't know, we'll, we'll see when this comes out because you're gonna find this amusing. It's not ready yet, but they want to impose this January 1st of 2024, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and so, so I'm going to show you the regulation, how this works. It is under right here. See, this is why I tell you guys to go to the Federal Register. It tells you where all this works. So when they're talking about this right here, it is implemented under here, okay? T uh, Title 31 of the Code of Federal Regulations, uh, Part 
10, 10, and you're going to find out it goes down to part two, uh, 10, 10 point 230. I'm going to show you right now. So I'm going to flip over here. This is the actual regulation that was mentioned right here. Okay. And what's interesting is the definition, they always start with the definition, right? Who's this apply to? Well, it applies to anyone who's transporting money instruments into or out of the United States that exceed $10,000, all right? So that's not the limit of it though, it goes on, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll down here, don't get dizzy. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go down to 0 0.230. So you can read this yourself and you've got the link here, okay? You can Google this stuff. Um, I wanna show you what we've been doing and where this is coming from. We've already, the banks have already been doing this. Not here though, but it's gonna be under two, th here we go. So this is section, here we go. 31 CFR part 1010.230, all right? This is what we have been doing. When you go to the bank and they ask you to identify who the beneficial owners, that's why they don't like PMAs. Um, and they can certainly, you know, deal with PMAs. It's just that they don't like us using them because uh, we can change them at any time, which that, we can do that anyway. In any case, here's what I think they're going to do. And I'm not going to go and bore you with all this stuff, but they're going to tell you who the beneficial owner is. And we've already had this discussion with many of you. You, you understand how they do in this stuff. Um, in fact, we, you, we use this concept to escape liability legally. They're just trying to, they're using this as that point in law where they can, they can regulate something. Okay. And I'm going to show you what they're going to do. So beneficial ownership reporting, information reporting, here's what they're going to do. They're going to, they're going to make it to where when someone registers a company with your secretary of state, all 50 states, I believe the secretary of state is going to be reporting to financial crimes network and probably some sort of batch reporting or something like that. So for example, let's say you register a company. This is my theory on how it's going to work. And you don't do this disclosure that I'm about to show you. You're probably going to get a notice saying, hey, if you don't do this thing within so many days, all, all, you know, all uh, problems are going to happen, right? So uh, then what's more likely going to happen is the bank's going to also be the enforcement arm of this whole monstrosity. And it's not going to do business with you unless you've reported on yourself. And of course, they do this under the guise of, you know, finding criminals. But of course, we're all suspects in these crimes and whatnot. Um, so I don't know exactly the, the legal aspects or how you would defend it yet. Um, there are some strategies, but I'm just going to say for the purpose of this recording, because I, I, I need to put more time into this. But the, for this purpose, what I'm, what I'm showing you today is I really don't see a problem with disclosing it. No, I don't like to have to disclose it. And they're almost making it to where if I if I register a company with the state, like let's say I want to register a company just to own property, so, uh, to hold title to my house, for example. Well, then I don't need an EIN. And by this, you still don't need an EIN. But in the FinCEN disclosure, it's going to ask you for uh, an identifying number from a government document or an identification document of some kind, right? Like a driver's license or a passport. This is interesting. So this is what it's looking at right now. So you're going to find this here. So they're going to tell you what beneficial ownership information is. It's all the kind of things we already know. Um, a reporting company would be the company that you're forming. Okay. Um, you cannot report this stuff now. I, I don't want to, but I mean, they're going to start saying in January that you're going to have to do this. I think the way they're going to enforce it is just by not letting you open a bank account. And maybe the secretary of state would um, with, uh, revoke your charter. Maybe. I don't know yet. I, I don't see a, a point in here where it's voluntary. Like they're saying, like, if you don't do this thing, it's gonna, there's going to be these penalties, civil and criminal penalties, right? So th this is who it applies to, everybody. Now, um, basically everybody, okay? Um, it does not exclude trust organizations, no matter how fancy you think your trust is. It does not exclude them. Um, this is not creating a tax liability either. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so there are some exemptions, but it's not gonna apply to most of us. It's, it's gonna be, I mean, they're exempting the their good old boys, right? They're not exempting people that actually go out in the world and, and, and work hard and, and have a business that they wanna, they want us to comply with all this stuff or we're gonna be excluded, right? So anyways, this is, all your FAQs regarding the subject. If you read all this, this is the what the Financial Crimes Network is saying, and this is what you want to follow. This is what you want to understand. Sure, you can.
go on the internet and find all this commentary and just realize that much of the commentary is about lawyers trying to scare you so they can sell you their scheme or whatever they're doing, okay? But this is, this is what it all comes down to here. So my summary of this whole thing is, all right, I don't like it, but Financial Crimes Network is collecting information for no other purpose than to collect information about the beneficial owners and they're uh, requiring not just your name, but they're requiring some sort of way to identify you, like uh, uh, the number of your driver's license, for example. Uh, and the way that information appears to be collected, it's going not, it's not ready yet, but it looks like it's going to be through what they call a portal or an, an API or something, you know, uh, a dialogue box, if you will, on the internet. So maybe this is going to be a link that is going to be uh, in the process of registering uh, with your Secretary of State when we form the companies. Like if you if you have someone do it or if you have me do it, it would be transparent to you. Other than I might have to ask for more information or you might have to provide more information. So we'll see how this plays out. But again, they're not ready yet. I just want to share this with you guys. All right, so I'm going to stop that. If you guys want to talk about it or make some comments, I mean, I'm sure we can we can uh, you know deal with this. It's just that's the way it looks right now. No, oh, somebody's got us. Okay, yeah, John, what do you have? Okay. Hi, John. I was wondering, will our um, uh, lien document we're going to have have any uh, bearing on this? Would we be able to use a pri private lien yes. uh, pr uh, against this? That's a great question. Yes, I, I, I that's why I'm, I'm I don't want to speak about it yet. But I, I just it's just like everything else. Every this is the worst change I've ever seen, by the way. OK, but every change I've seen in the last 30 years, I've always been a, had, had a way to get around it. But this time I'm going to say. I think this is a chance to beat them over the head. All right. Now, <laughs> seriously, I'm, I'm very interested. With a wet noodle. Oh, man. But look, look. All right. So I'm going to show you something. So let's go down to their FAQs. This is what caught my attention, right? At the very end, they say, How will FinCEN protect beneficial ownership information reported to it? Oh, yeah. It's so important to us. Yeah. And we're going to have a secure IT system. Oh, well, that's nice. What I'd like to know is what your financial responsibility and accountability is to me for a data breach, and you don't show it here. And what about when you collect information that identifies my banking activities and identifies me ultimately, because I'm going to have to give you something that's identifying me, and I have a lien on that. Yeah. So anyways, that's one way we can beat the crap out of them. The other way is, I mean, why are you a suspect in that you have to tell on yourself? What? Everyone's a suspect now? Can that be even legal? You know? So it'll be interesting. Good question, though. John, I got a question. Yeah. So did you say that you, if we have an LLC that we have, that you can actually write, an, was it the operator, uh, operating agreement that you said that you could, you write it a certain way? Is that, did, did well, that correct? Well, it, it would be the articles. The operating agreement, nobody gets to see. But when, when I deal with the bank, like I give you documents, you don't even need these documents. I just try to make it easier to go into the bank. So what's going to okay. happen is, I think in addition to this, um, you're probably going to get some sort of approval or that you can, that you've disclosed or filed a report with FinCEN. It's going to be something like that. The, and the bank's going to say, we're not going to open your account unless you have this certificate or something from FinCEN, probably. And the Secretary of State won't let you renew your charter or even register a company without compliance. That's what I'm thinking. And this is why so, a few years ago I started this thing about you know corporate structures on the internet that are outside okay. the SMB. Yeah, but, we can talk about that later. Because uh, I got a uh, an aged LLC I bought from somebody, and um, what I have to get from it's in New Mexico. What I have to get is the um, Articles and you know you know when if you if you actually yeah. went and registered and bought one and they send you that yeah article exactly and, what I think yeah. so I have to get that from them so I'll be able to get that but you're saying if I want to go and open up a bank account or something they might ask for this yeah this yeah I so, think what's going to so happen I, is they're going to make it to where even if you have a New Mexico that doesn't require an annual report I think the Secretary of State and or the bank is going to send you a notice saying you have to do this FinCEN thing. And if you don't, they're going to revoke your charter or not open your account. It'll be what if, like you already have, what if you already have an account? Because I have one of those. I think they'll close it. They'll close a the bank account? Uh -huh. I think that's what they're going to do. Yeah. And as much as I don't like disclosing it, um, I don't see a, a problem 
to disclose this information. Um, at the same time, I think I would disclaim all liability because really the, the law itself is really there for uh, investigating crimes and you're not a suspect in a crime, but yet you're being asked to, you know, give up evidence against yourself that could be used against yeah, you. Yeah, you think you could claim the fifth or something, right? Yeah, you know, something like that. I wonder about that. So, <laughs> like I said, so, I, you know, there's more research I have to do on this. But. Okay. Well, I have one, uh, like I said, I've had it for a while. You helped me set it up. We did the PMA and everything and everything's yeah. been cool, but I guess if I get one, I guess I'll have to let you, let you know and hopefully you'll have something we can use. <laughs> yeah, and you know, the other thing is, I believe, you know how we do the bait and switch on them where we change the uh, the owners and uh, we file amended right. articles and stuff. I mean, I think when you right. renew, we file your annual report or you file your company for the first time or you, or you uh, amend the articles, I think all this is gonna come into play. There's gonna be this, you know, checkpoint. <laughs> right, right. That, all right, well, just wait and see. Right? Let's wait and see what happens. Yeah. So I'll give you guys, we'll have more discussion on this. I just want to bring this up because I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about it. And and yeah, it is what you see here, but this is what you want to see. Don't be shopping around the internet going, getting all crazy. Oh no, this guy is falling. But yeah. this is 24, right? Didn't you said this is until 2024 though, right? Yeah, you got eight, what, eight months? Yeah. Okay. Well, we got time then to really dial it in. Huh? We have time to dial it in, <laughs> understand what their game is. Yeah. And 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 I, I just really, I don't know how they can even enforce this legally, but I've seen them do it on the... Uh, offshore type deals. And I didn't really, the only thing I did, in fact, I can share this with you guys. I have a case right now where I filed a motion to dismiss in Fed court and the judges refused to make a ruling on it. They did, they wanted to ignore it, right? And I'll tell you what I did, but it was right under the same body of laws, okay? Exactly, under the Bank Secrecy Act, but it's exact regs, okay? And so uh, the client was sued uh, by the, by the um, was it IRS? Yeah, IRS, which is the United States. So the, my client sued by the United States for not having filled out the forms correctly. And this is a quagmire of having to fill out forms because I can just tell you from the rules, you'll never be able to do it correctly. They can always say you didn't do it correctly. That's why I say, don't even fill them out. But the problem is, so they, they wanted to do this. So I filed a motion to dismiss and I said that this, um, this body of law under which they're trying to enforce these disclosure rules has to do with um, risk to national security. And I cited the law and everything. I cited the I cited the intent of Congress. I put that all on the record. I can, I can show you guys the motion. I'll strip it out of you know the name. And uh, the, the judge first, he didn't want to rule on it <laughs> because it's jurisdictional. So we could file it anytime we want. I could file it you know a year after they made a ruling against my client or something. And then I filed a motion. I said, hey, <laughs> you only have so many days to make a ruling on this. Come on, judge. What, what's up? So he filed, he made a ruling and he says denied. <laughs> You know, so they're gonna they're gonna put the onus on us to do something about this. If you still want to deal with the banks afterwards, I mean, what I'm thinking is, what we need to do is set up our companies the way that we used to do it a hundred years ago. Is you announce the company in the public with its articles instead of registering with the state, you announce the company in the public and you operate that way and you use a monetary unit that's suitable for your your industry. Which we had that we had that um, just before. Well. It, towards the end of the Civil War, we didn't have one currency. We had a list of them. And I think we're going to end up going back there. I mean, they brought in the, the diff, different crypto coins. So we have we we have that. This is, wasn't, this is not new, but we're just not embracing it. We've been gambling in cryptos. We're not using it for what it really should be used for yet. And so my thinking is, why not create a, a whole accounting suite with a corporate structure that's published on the blockchain, and then you have your own currency, and then it interacts with everyone else. This is nothing new. It's just using technology, and this will allow companies to operate outside the banking system. I really think this might be the solution to it all. So, would you discourage us still getting these LLCs, setting up these LLCs and stuff, even if it's just uh, not, we're not even getting an EIN, like just to hold, you know, title to a car or something? I mean, is that well? If you're if you're going to register, I just think you're not going to get around this. I think if you want to use a company, like okay, you can use a company and not register it. Yeah, you will avoid it then. So sure. That and and I will always do that. If if I register a company and I'm going to hold title to real estate or my vehicle, I don't need an EIN and I don't need a bank account for it, right? Right. right, right. So let's say I mean let's say you have a myriad of investments, um, and I've done this many times before where I'll I'll create LLCs for the client, but I won't register them, and then I only register one LLC with an EIN and a bank account, and that manages all the cash for all the other investments. Okay. So now my footprint into the disclosing all this stuff is very very narrow. We can do it that way and we can still do it that way. You know, that they're not going to stop us there. Um, yeah, it's just yeah. that when we have to register something because the bank says we're not going to open your account unless you've registered, right? They've been doing this forever. 
Now, and, right. and now they're going to, I think the choke point now is moved from the retail industry. Now, now it's moved to where you're actually registering the company. That's like the, that's a big change. So like if you're in California and you have a New Mexico LLC, that, that's the kind of thing you're talking about? No, Somewhere you can down. still register the company. I, I, that, that's not a problem. Yeah. It's just that at the choke point, right, at the Secretary of State's office, you're going to have an additional disclosure obligation. That's what's going to happen. Or the Secretary mm -hmm. of State's not going to register it. And, and that doesn't mean yeah, your company yeah. cannot be valid. I mean, obviously, you can have a company that's valid that's not registered with the state in many ways. And so the, the, the key for us is that if we need to, most of us need to deal with the banks because, you know, we're dealing with money and cash and business and this sort of thing. So that's where we, that's where our problem is. Now, I, someone introduced me the other day. This um, you probably already know this, but True USD, the, the stable token, it has a, an escrow account, um, token something, token trust or something like that. I forget. But anyways, apparently, and I haven't opened an account there. I think once you go through KYC with Token Trust, it's going to allow people to go from dollars to the stablecoin, back and forth, as as an escrow. So it's just something worth looking into. But what I'm trying to do is, and I've been so far behind in doing this, is create a corporate structure with its own uh, software accounting suite, its own ability to manage the company from start to finish. If you want to raise capital, our software can do this. You want to do the accounting, it, it's done. You want to do, borrow money, it's done. It's all in the accounting, okay? It's on the blockchain and it has its own currency. So the, the stock has its own, it's its own currency, it's the, the value of the company, right? And it's all on an IP address. It's not a legal document per se. It's it's on an IP address, right? So your corporation is going to be basically online credentials. So we, we just haven't released it yet. And supposedly this year, we're, we should be having a, a beta version. So we'll see what happens. Maybe that might be our ticket nice. on the way out of this. Nice. What? Yeah, we'll see. So. All right, so that's it. Um, I just want to share that with you all. I'm recording this. I'm going to give you all the link and the call from Thursday. I'm going to publish that shortly. Thanks a lot. Enjoy your weekend, y'all. Thank you, John. All right. As usual. All right, see you Thanks. soon. Thanks. Okay, Thanks. take care.